everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're going to be doing a transfer technique, and I know we've done this before, but I really think I've gotten this thing perfected now, and I really wanted to share this with you guys. So it's kind of like the third part <laughs> to my liquid uh, polymer clay Sculpey uh, transfer technique. So right here, I have a bottle of that clear translucent uh, polymer clay, and it's that liquid form, of course, and we're going to go ahead and pour this all into the jar. Okay, and the reason for this is because I really do not like these plastic bottles. Okay, even when you buy them in the store, uh, sometimes they're hard on the bottom and that's because they've started to solidify in the bottle itself, which becomes unuseful. I mean, you can't use it, right? And you're just, okay, great, what do I do now? Well, we're gonna go ahead and make it so that all of this bottle is useful to you. You don't have to throw it out, please don't. This stuff is so wonderful. So right here, I poured out as much as I can and then I'm bringing in my scissors and I'm cutting this bottle in half, this plastic bottle, which is not useful. <laughs> it really isn't. And I'm trying to get out as much as I can, but guess what? It's hard on the bottom. So I'm taking my knife here. This is where my, you know, and I got this knife at one of my local thrift stores, just one that I could use in the clay and I'm digging out all the extra clay and I'm putting it into that jar. Once I have it in that jar, and I mean, I'm, <laughs> I really had to dig. This, some, this had really gotten hard on the bottom. And many of you I know are thinking, well, that's not gonna be very good, right? In that liquid Sculpey. And I'm like, oh no, no, you can, re you can use this, guys. Don't throw it away. It's, oh my gosh, it is so awesome. So right here, I'm taking this out, right? I'm totally taking out as much clay as I can get liquid form out of that container, out of both ends. And once I get this transfer, we're gonna add in a little something that's gonna make all the difference in the world. All right, so as you can tell, I'm going ahead and I'm just stirring this up as best I can. And yes, there are some chunks in here. If I keep stirring, I could probably get this back into working order, but that's gonna take a lot of time. So I'm gonna use a help here. This is my baby oil and I love this. Now I know there are some polymer clay artists that say do not use this stuff. I'm sorry, I don't see how it's not a help. Um, it, it has been very useful in this context, especially when I'm trying to do the transfer technique, because I want to get this into a running, very much a running liquid. And to get it there, sometimes it needs a little help to get itself back to where it's reconstituted into working order. So to do that, eh, let's go ahead and just add in. And I, I start with like, oh, six to seven drops especially if it's really hard or even more just to get it working. And then once you have it really working, then I ebb off. So don't use a half a bottle, <laughs> use a little bit at a time, but you could tell right here, now I've gotten it into a very nice runny form and that's what you're looking for. Okay, now that we got our liquid Sculpey all in a nice runny form, I'm bringing in an index card, and then this is an image I printed out on that semi-gloss um, uh, laser paper. So you want that glossy paper to go ahead and create your image on, which is great. I cut it down, then I'm bringing my embossing gun, and then I clipped that piece to the index card. Now I'm taking my knife, and I'm just spreading the clay onto the image area. 
And notice here too, I let the rest of it kind of drip off back into the jar. Now it can be a little bit messy, <laughs> but it's not too bad. And I like to use the, uh, the knife to kind of help spread around the clay onto the image. Now, once I have a decent coating, I'll let Sir Isaac Newton take over and have gravity do its thing. So I'm just letting it drip into that jar. And then I'm going to also take my heat gun here and I start to heat it up on one corner at the very top. And you'll make that clay. I'll, I'll bake it on the way down. As I bake it, the clay itself will start to pull or move downwards, which is really great because then I get a thin sheet without having to brush it on. I know my last video, I used the brush, but here's the thing, when I did that, it would sometimes be inconsistent. So the coating would be inconsistent and it, it, it was just not working really well for me. This was perfect because I didn't touch the clay. The clay just naturally ran off the page and I got a nice thin sheet without having to do anything more. Now you'll also notice here, I'm bringing that image up to a nice high shine so that it's baked thoroughly. Once I do that though, here's the difference. I went ahead and I have a fan over here on my corner, okay? I'm putting that image right up against that fan as soon as I am done baking it. So almost right away. So it's, and I think part of the reason why I do this, and I think it helps a lot, is when you're heating that clay, that ink is being transferred into the clay itself. As soon as that heat goes away, the transfer stops. So at least in my mind, that's how I see it. It's like, it just stops. So once it stops, then, you know, I feel like if I go ahead and I make sure that it's right into the clay and then I cool it down right away, that clay then, or that ink is in the clay and it's not on the page. So when I go and peel it apart, like I am doing right here, it's gonna come up beautiful. So I've got that nice edge and again, just taking it off and there you can see, I got almost all the image off and there it is. And right here you could tell I put it on anything and yeah, you're gonna get a beautiful look. All right, so now you can tell I've got this clear translucent in this particular like baby food, pet food jar. Here are those crazy spice jars and I love this. I can pour it in there. These are like three ounce bottles. I found the, these right here I found at my thrift store, okay? So they're not quite three ounce. <laughs> but um, the other ones I bought, I went to the container store. Those were three ounce bottles and it worked out great. And so I just went ahead and poured all of my liquid Sculpies into there. So if I've got my black, my white, my pearl, you know, all the, you know, they got the color ones. You could take each jar and put your liquid Sculpies into these jars. The nice thing about doing this, of course, is that really for me, you know, over time, liquid Sculpey is going to harden up no matter what you do. I mean, you put it on your shelf or whatever, you're not going to go through it all right away. <laughs> so it's kind of nice to have a way to take that clay and be able to use it. And if you've got your knife there to stir it all up and everything, it works great. So I had some leftover oval stickers that I really loved and I thought this would be a nice way to label these jars. The thing was though, they were a little bit big, so I cut them in half. And so that's what I did there. And then I just put clear translucent um, on the one here. I'm taking a clear packaging tape and putting that over the top of my sticker. Now I'm doing that mainly to protect the sticker, you know. Um, this way then water or even the liquid Sculpey, it's not gonna get on that sticker, which could probably mess it up <laughs> over time. And it seals it in, so you don't have to worry about it. Right here, I'm going in with some of my silver liquid Sculpey, and again, I'm just transferring this clay into another one of those spice jars. Once I have that done, I'll go ahead and I'll add on another label. I'll put a little bit of packaging tape over that label, and it's all done.
All right, so now I'm bringing in that a, a spice rack that I had, and I had painted this up. I thought this would be a really nice way to go ahead and store it. Um, so if you don't have anything, not a really great organizer around, but you'll probably have a spice rack, or you can easily probably find one of these somewhere, you know, at your thrift store or whatever. And so right here, that's what I did. Um, you might remember I did a review on the desk made organizers. That's the other one in the background that I'm using. So I'm using my spice, you know, either in the spice rack or in the organizer and both fit wonderfully. I love them. <laughs> so go and get yourself a couple of those spice racks. They'll really come in handy or find yourself the desk made organizer. You'll love that as well. All right, so this is the end of my video on the transfer technique with the storage and everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.